In this video, I'll be going over the Ayatori strat for Light Rampant in E8S. This strategy is not very difficult to learn and execute, and allows for more uptime than some more popular strategies. I'll first go over the sequence of execution with breakdowns for both the chain and orb perspectives. Afterwards, we'll review the entirety of the mechanic as a whole for players that want a more in-depth explanation with more detailed instructions. Chains. Step 1. Bowtie. Chain players must first occupy the four one-person towers that spawn, organizing in a manner that creates a bowtie shape, meaning that the parallel chains are running in a north-to-south orientation. This is simpler than it sounds, and I'll break it down later on. Step 2. Second tower. Chain players next adjust to the two-person towers that spawn north and south. Step 3. Cleaves. After their two-person towers resolve, chain players move forward to bait Path of Light cleaves north and south. Step 4. Three stacks in. Any players currently with three stacks of lights deep on their debuff bar move into the final four-person tower. Orbs. Step 1. Cleaves. Move into Shiva's hitbox to the cardinal your orb spawned in to bait the first Path of Light cleaves. The ninja star points in the center of the arena are useful for positioning here. Step 2. Run through. Run through Shiva's hitbox to kite your orb, bearing to the right to avoid orbs passing through the center. If done correctly, you'll have two orb players west of Shiva, and two orb players east of Shiva. Step 3. Pop. When your orb has shrink, pop it without hitting your friends. Step 4. Three stacks in. Any players currently with three stacks of lights steeped on their debuff bar move into the final four-person tower. That's the entire mechanic broken down. Now I'll walk through the entire mechanic with more detailed information on execution and organization. Light Rampant is a cast that does many things at once. It deals raid-wide AoE damage, it gives two DPS, one tank and one healer a chain debuff, summons four orbs that each tether to the remaining players, and assigns stacks of light steep to various players. If chain players move too close together, you die. If you pop the orb before it shrinks, you die. If you get five stacks of light steeped, you guessed it, you die. Unless you're a tank. Sometimes. The first priority for chain players is to form a bow tie, while the first priority for orb players is to move to the cardinal their orb spawned in, inside of Shiva's hitbox. We mark each tower with a marker to make creating the bow tie easier to call. The tanks are assigned to one marker, the healers another, and two DPS to each of the remainder. We also designate one DPS from each marker to be the adjuster in the event that two DPS at the same marker get both chains, which creates an L shape. Once the chains are spread to their markers, we assess the shape. The ideal scenario is a natural bow tie configuration, but this is often not the case. The two other possible configurations are either an hourglass, where the parallel lines run west to east, or a square. You know squares. An important note about the chains is that they don't activate for the first 10 seconds after appearing. This gives us a short period of time to adjust our configuration without penalty. In the event of an hourglass configuration, we have the players at the markers 1 and 3 switch places to fix the shape. In the event of a square configuration, we have the players at the markers 1 and 4 switch places to fix the shape. Once the bow tie is formed, chain players wait for their towers to resolve at max melee range from Shiva. When the towers resolve, they will add a stack of lights deep to the players resolving them. While the chain players are having a blast with geometry, orb players are given the perilous task of going to the cardinal their orb spawned in, and standing inside of Shiva's hitbox to bait the four cleaves from her Path of Light cast. These cleaves will give all players hit an additional stack of lights steeped, and we don't have any extras to go around, so be mindful to bait yours directly on the cardinal. As soon as they are cleaved, the orb players can begin kiting their orbs through Shiva. To do this, they run straight through Shiva's hitbox, bearing to the right to avoid orbs coming towards Shiva from the opposite direction. Once you're familiar with this movement and its timing, this is a great opportunity for uptime. Each orb player should find themselves on the west or east side of the arena. To find out specifically where you should end up, look at the marker that is across from your starting position, on the right. The player whose orb spawns north winds up near the 4 marker, or the southwest part of the arena, east winds up at 1, or northwest, south winds up at 2, or northeast, and west winds up at 3, or southeast. Note that while we are in the general area of our markers, we are staying in the far east and west sections of the arena to avoid the second set of cleaves that the tower players are baiting. Kite the orb until it shrinks, and then pop it, being mindful that it explodes in an AoE 
and will give all players hit a stack of light steeped. Back to the chain players, after their towers resolve, they will move to the set of two person towers that spawn north and south. This is the motion that mandates the bow tie formation. If the chains are running horizontally, when the players at 1 and 2 come together, the chains will explode, and the same would be true for the players at 3 and 4. As soon as their towers resolve, the chain players will move close to Shiva to bait the second set of Path of Light cleaves. Their chain debuff has conveniently fallen off at this point, so they are free to get very close to Shiva. This ensures that any melee orb players are able to keep up time at max melee without accidentally baiting your cleave. The easy way to make sure you're in the right spot is to look for this snowflake point and stand on it. This will allow you to bait the cleaves without overlapping. With all the orbs popped, there is just one final four-person tower to resolve. If you've done everything right up until now, your party will have four players at three stacks of light steeped and four players at four stacks. As we discussed before, five stacks is a bad time, so the four players with three stacks move into the final tower to resolve the mechanic. That's it for my overview of the Ayatori strat for Light Rampant. If you have questions about this mechanic or want to see similar videos about a different mechanic, or have feedback on how these guides can be more direct and informative in the future, I look forward to reading your comments.